Hello guys and welcome to my channel. I'm very very excited today because finally I'll be making a custom Daniel Smith watercolor palette. If you have seen my previous video then I have shared my first impressions with their watercolor essential set and if you watched it then you know that even though there are some characteristics which I cannot say are good for me or for the way I like to paint Generally, I really really enjoyed them. So I really wanted to make my custom Daniel Smith watercolor palette and explore these paints a little bit more and see how it goes. And I definitely really really like that most of the colors have very very high light fastness and that is very important for me because if I like a painting, I do want to have it on the wall. I don't want it to be just in a sketchbook and fortunately when people come and see the paintings they like them and then my paintings find new homes instead of, you know, just being stored somewhere in the dark corner and thrown out. So I really hope that I'll be able to become friends with these paints. But anyway, like I said in my previous video, the basic of this, or the basis of my custom palette is going to be this um, watercolor essential set from Daniel Smith. And I've also collected some other colors that I would like to add to my palette. And actually these three colors I had before I acquired this one and I had them for a while and I got them by accident more or less and I didn't really have the time to pick the colors so it was like really hit or miss and uh, I will tell you later on which of the colors I decided to put in the palette and then other colors are the ones I typically use or that I would like to try using and I'm gonna put my paints into this palette and I actually think it's quite amazing because it's a very unusual design it's not what you typically see when you think about a metal tin palette it doesn't have a ring so it's not that comfortable if you want to paint outside because I actually like having a ring so you can hold your palette very firmly but what I do like that it opens completely flat so this one is a wonderful mixing area and there's plenty of space for everything I need. So I will actually, this is already my second palette. I used the first one for other type of paints that I have. But so I'll stop rambling for now and let's continue to making a palette. So the first color is Hansa Yellow Light from the Daniel Smith Watercolor Essentials set. Oh, and so guys, so I'll fill in the palette and then I'll tell you then I'll make a swatch and tell you which colors I have included.
And so guys, I've actually missed one color because it was lying separately in the package. So like I said, I've got this three ones before, but the choice was quite random. And unfortunately, I'm not really a fan of two of them. Even though manganese blue hue is a very, very pretty color, but it has quite a low like light fastness. I mean, it's not low, it's two, but as I explained before, it's not good enough for me. I'm trying to go for the highest light fastness possible. But quinacridone coral, that's the beauty. This is just a fantastic color and as you can see I have used it already quite a bit because I don't know it works everywhere it's like a perfect orangey red it's hard to explain so but now I'm gonna edit and try to stick it in at the right place somewhere here <laughs> I've showed you the colors that I've added to my palette, but uh, now I'll make a swatch card and uh, I'll walk you through it. Oh, and by the way, two things I'd like to mention. First of all, you have probably noticed that I do not like mix the paints with a toothpick. And first of all, I just feel that if I do it, then there will still be some pigment lost if I mix it and then you wipe it off. and. And the second is that then it gets into the corners and when you actually reach the when you reach like the end how to say you know when you use up the pigment and then you still have this paint in the corners it might be a bit difficult to get out of it so if i leave it just that way and it dries like this i think it's much easier to use it that way and the second thing you've also noticed that i didn't fill in all the pants to the maximum because i'm not quite sure yet how much I'm going to use some of them because I don't know like Hansa yellow or Hansa yellow light well yeah probably but I'm not sure it's not my first choice for the yellow color the same goes for Quinacridone Rose and French Ultramarine which I know is very weird because usually everybody loves Ultramarine I don't know, I, I just don't like the tint of the color, so I usually pick some other blues from the palette. Even though, of course, ultramarine, ultramarine is ultimately useful. But uh, yeah, let's proceed to making a swatch card and it will be just a very loose swatch card because I want to understand how I feel for the paints and if I would like to change some of the colors. So let's, let's move to it. <music> So let's make some swatches now and this will serve as my temporary swatch card till I'm 100% sure about how I feel about my palette and if the colors work together because to be honest there wasn't any system. Some of the colors are the ones that I like the most and others that are new to me but I thought they looked very pretty and I really wanted to try them out. So and I'm taking my Da Vinci Casaneo. Is it called just flat brush number eight? But so the first color is hence a yellow light. Is a nice color. So the next one is Gamboge. And I haven't tried Gamboge from other brands. So that was very new to me. And I had a feeling that was a bit opaque. But and it's also very much on the orange side. It's not like warm yellow. It's not like I don't know, Nigel Ezo yellow, which is a beautiful warm yellow in my eyes at least but when I actually tried it out in my previous video when I just testing out the watercolor essential set when you work with it it just glazes so nicely and it works with other colors really really great so 
I really want to try using it more and see what else I can get out of it. And then the third color, this one is new to me, and it is Aussie Red Gold. It came out very thick out of the tube. Ah, this is so pretty. And to be honest, I really wanted to get quinacridone gold, but that wasn't possible. And I'm talking not the old quinacridone gold, just the standard one that they're selling now, because it's very nice, yeah, golden color, but they didn't have it. So I decided, well, why not to try this one and see if I can use Aussie Red Gold instead. Okay, and in my palette I actually put Quinacridone Coral here, but now that I look at it, I should probably change the place. So uh, I will take the Pyro, Scar Pyro Scarlet first. So now Quinacridon Coral. And next to Pyro Scarlet, it looks like a cool color, but it actually isn't. I mean, I don't know, when I use it in a painting, I don't see it as a cool red. I don't know. Oh, no. But it's like they say sometimes to. Sometimes colors work differently when they are surrounded by different colors, if you understand what I mean. So, Quinacridon Rose. Nice, cool color, maybe could be a little bit brighter, but oh well, let's see how it goes. The next color is Moon Glow. And I actually like this color a lot. Not necessarily for actually its properties to fall into different colors, but I just think it's so gorgeous on its own. And it works in landscapes and some of you probably have seen the video where the light fastness has been discussed so after I make this palette I'm actually gonna see if I can test it for myself because I do not want fugitive colors in my palette at all because what if I paint a masterpiece and then I cannot hang it huh right and yes, you can scan it and print it, but I feel like it's always a gamble. And this is French Ultramarine, and Daniel Smith would definitely have a very, very beautiful version of Ultramarine. There's no doubt about that. But it's not my favorite blue, so we will see. Then I just Thalo Blue Green Shade. So intense, so beautiful. Ah, I love this color. And then the next one is a very special color. It's Sleeping Beauty Turquoise Genuine. It's the only color from the Primatex series that I have. And I don't know, when I saw it, it was impossible for me not to take it. And usually I would opt in for Cobalt Teal because I really like this color. But maybe you have noticed that actually in my palette there are no cadmiums or nickels, at least as far as I know. I cannot say that I checked everything one by one. But I try to avoid those colors that can be potentially harmful for you or for the environment. I'm not an expert, 
don't take my word for granted make your own research but I thought if I can make this you know a palette avoiding potentially harmful colors including cobalts then why not I can do without them I can work with some other colors so why not to try it out anyway now it's sleeping beauty turquoise Jenny it's a, it's a bit thick just like Aussie red gold actually This is gorgeous. I'm looking forward to experimenting with this color. And you know, I like actually adding to my palette colors that I'm not that familiar with, but that inspire me, you know? I think that the palette should inspire you to paint so that you open it and then it's just great. I have a custom White Knight, White Knight's palette that I've made and I think I've managed to succeed there because when I opened my White Knight's palette, I was like, yep, I want to paint there all the colors that I need to spark my creativity. But so now it's Thalo Green, blue shade. Very nice, very beautiful. Pigmented green. And actually this is scrap paper and it feels like it is a little bit too thin swatching so I'm probably gonna remake this card in the future we'll see anyway now it is set green or just green so beautiful that's just a beautiful set green there are two set greens that I like and this is Daniel Smith and White Knights because even though I love core I'm I'm not biggest fan of the SF green. I think it could be a little bit brighter. So the next one. And this beauty is pearly green. And I love it. Oh, look at this. Absolutely perfect moody green. Such an amazing color, it's fantastic. And the last one is Sepia. I just kind of regret it already that I picked it for a palette. Though I've tested and it makes nice mix with Ultramarine for gray and I do like Sepia on its own. But it's a very multi-pigmented color and I have some ideas. <clears throat> of what else could work for me, so let's see. But it's beautiful, it's definitely beautiful. So let me just show it to you a little bit closer because I'm also using natural light, so it might be a bit difficult to see. Now, just let it dry for a couple of minutes so that I could show you the final dried version of it. So guys, now my palette is ready and I'm really happy about how it turned out. Of course, I still need to test it a lot and see how the colors are working together. And I know that, that you usually do the other way around, you see which colors are working for you and then you add them to the palette. But I'm not very familiar with the Daniel Smith paints. I do not know yet what I'm going to like or what I'm not going to like and which color combination. So. I just went with my gut and let's see how it's gonna roll out and I think in my next video I'll show you the painting that I'm gonna make with this paints because I really really want to play with them but if I add this video here then it would probably be a little bit too long anyway I'm very very happy about my palette and it's gorgeous and I'm looking forward to using this mixing areas and to experience the, I don't know, the Primatech color and the Aussie Red Gold. I'm so excited about these ones. And now you can already see that the moon glow is separating, you see? Oh, it's beautiful. It's it's a, definitely a very magical mixture, I think, of the pigments. Oh, I like it a lot. But so anyway, I really hope that you have enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet. And I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!